the diseases of attitude. It's never that pleasant to talk about the negative, but we got to talk about it because life is part negative. These attitude diseases are like weeds that grow in the garden. It's a normal part of life. Here's a good phrase to note. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. And here's the next key, in my opinion. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it. Handle it. Now, I know some people teach the other way. And listen to them. And listen to me. And then make up your own mind. Right? Don't be a follower. Be a student. But I say, you've got to handle the negative. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it. But you do have to handle it, my opinion. I know some people teach, just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your garden. <laughs> so you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. Mr. Reynolds and I are working on a new book this year called The Great War Between Good and Evil. And there is a war on. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. If democracy sleeps, guess who never sleeps? Tyranny. In the absence of light, guess what's automatic? Darkness. If good does not arouse itself and become active, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war. A mental war, a physical war, a financial war between enterprise and ease, between accomplishment and failure. It's a war. That's why there's an Old Testament phrase that gives the best advice for human activity when it says, six days labor, one day rest. Now, I'm sure we've taken that to mean, don't work all seven days, take one off. Here's what it also means, only take one off. <laughs> or you're liable to lose the war. <coughs> Now, we've got it down to five and two, and maybe that's not too dangerous. I don't know. If God would have thought of five and two, he might have made it five and two. I don't know. You can't think of everything. But here's what it does mean. Enterprise is better than ease. If you rest too long, the jungle overtakes the village. Now, here's the good news about the war between good and evil. Evil is no match for good, but good must be active. Weeds are no match for human activity. But if you stand still, how far in will they come? All the way. They'll grow right up around your shoes. <laughs> but if you get busy, how far back can you take them? As far as you wish. They're no match, but you must be active. That's why the six and one. Make sure you're not losing the war by taking off too much. Guess what the average years are after retirement? Six. Six. Which means don't retire. <laughs> Your chances are too slim. Okay. The war between good and evil, the weeds. You got to make sure you recognize the negative, handle it, deal with it, and then go on. Let's make a list of the diseases of attitude that can wreck all your chances to do well. One of the words that destroys everything is called neglect. Neglect. And I found this out. A week of neglect could cost you a year of repair. It isn't worth it. So what to be on the lookout for? Here's the list. If you were making it, you'd have the same list I've got. Right? We're not covering anything new tonight. This is a reminding session, not a teaching session. But it doesn't hurt to go over it again. Here's the list. Attitude diseases. 
Number one is indifference. The shrug of the shoulder. The guy's not even concerned. He's just drifting. This is called the mild approach to life. A disease known as mildness. The guy says, well, I can't see getting all that worked up. Well, to be any kind of winner, you got to get worked up. There's one problem with drift. You cannot drift to the top of the mountain. And the good Lord said in the closing chapters of the Bible, here's the best way to live, one way or the other. That's best. Hot or what's next best? Cold is next best to hot. Not the half-baked middle, lukewarm, not too hot, not too cold. What a sad way to live. I think what it means is pick a direction and go with everything you got. Just pick one and go. Somebody says, yeah, but what if it's the wrong direction? You'll find out quicker. <laughs> It won't take you 25 years to wake up and say, oh no, I've been walking the wrong road. I told my staff the other day, next best to prosperity is adversity. If one doesn't get you, pray for the other. We all do better from one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And I don't wish anything bad on you tonight, but if you're not inspired, I hope a wagon comes down your rut. Whatever it takes to get you to try harder, read more, set your goals, and go for it. Somebody asked me one time, what quality would I pick if I wanted to work with somebody? And you know what I picked first, number one? Strong feeling. Please, number one, give me somebody that feels strong. About most anything, I don't even care. Just so they believe it even if they disagree with me. Wonderful, just so they disagree vigorously. I'm not saying it's easy to win those kind of people to your point of view, but I'd rather do that than to try to resurrect people from the dead. Pump them up every month, pump them up, pump them up. I pass. <laughs>